Digimon, Digital Monsters, Digimon are the champions. That's right, your geek history lesson on Digimon is now in session. Hello and welcome to Geek History Lesson. I'm Ashley Victoria Robinson. I'm Jason Slightly Confused Inman. <laughs> welcome to Geek History Lesson, the podcast where we take one subject, character, show, cartoon, or digital game, or card game, and explain it in less than an hour or so. And today's lesson, as you enter the Mind University, because that's the name of this lovely podcast that you're now listening to, is about Digimon. Yes! Um, a subject that I'm going to be honest with, I know absolutely not one thing about. Well, it's pretty freaking great. Uh, we are talking about Digimon this week, because the latest English dub of Digimon Try is out in theaters. If you happen to be near one of the 15 screenings they're doing all over the world. It's only 15 screenings in the entire world or 15 screenings in the United States? It's 15 screenings in the world uh, uh, in, of the English dub. And then it very will be... Very exclusive. Uh, it's hilariously already available on Crunchyroll in Japanese with subtitles. But really? Yeah, and it has oh. been for like a year now. <laughs> oh, that's weird. Um, they just take a really long time to do the English dubs. Okay. So we use this as an excuse to, for me to teach a lesson on Digimon because I wanted to for a while. All right. Is this suggested by anybody? <laughs> it was not I didn't suggested so. by anybody, but I can think of at least one listener who'll be excited about it. Can I ask you a question? Yes. Um, I wonder how many Pokemon requests we have. <laughs> um, we have more than zero, and I'm going to be honest with you, I don't want to teach that lesson. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's move into the first section of our podcast, the 10 cent origin, where Ashley yes. is going to tell you the Cliff Notes version of everything you need to know about Digimon in case you go to a really sweet Comic Con party and someone's like, yo, man, you know what Digimon is? And because you listen to this first section of our podcast, you're going to know what to say. Oh, Toei, if you are throwing a Digimon themed uh, San Diego Comic Con party, please invite me. <laughs> so, Digimon is the English name for Digimon in Japanese, which is short for Digital Monsters. I know, guys, mind blowing. It was created by Akiyoshi Hongo. Uh, he created the toy pet version of it. We'll get into the different versions. Okay. Toei Animation, who created the anime. Toei Animation is basically the company that created anime as we know it. They're very famous for things like Sally the Witch, Cutie Honey, Dragon Ball, Transformers, Yu-Gi-Oh! and One Piece, which is still being made. Uh, Viz, who did the, uh, Wiz, who did the movies, and Bandai, who handled some of the digital games. It is a Japanese multimedia franchise that encompasses virtual pet toys, anime, manga, video games, films, and trading card games games and revolves around digi destined who are humans they're usually children or teenagers from our world the normal human world that are tied to familiars that live in a parallel digital world that are called digimon the digi destined and their digimon team up to defeat threats that almost exclusively originate in the digital world and want to destroy the fabric between both realities that's your 10 cent origin <laughs> I don't know if I understood much of that. Uh, there's cute little humans who have cute little pets that live in different worlds. Thank you. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move into the meet cute, yes. where it's going to be exclusively about Ashley, because I've never met Digimon ever in my real life, but this is a term that we stole from romantic comedies mm -hmm. where we tell you about how we first encountered the subject matter of the podcast, hence Digimon. Ashley, yeah. how'd you first encounter Digimon? Uh, Digimon was one of those cool animes because it was created sort of at the that 90s hype of anime where it was dubbed into English almost immediately. Yeah, and it, and it, it aired. I remember seeing it on American stations. Yeah, it aired. And it actually, did it air in Canada too? It did. Actually, um, Canada's the whole reason that we get English dubs of popular anime. Canada's the whole reason we got the deke dub of Sailor Moon. You're welcome. Um, Why? Because Canadian... Companies paid for those dubs. Okay. Um, all of the all the Deke dub, the original dub of Sailor Moon, they're all Canadian voice actors. Okay. Um, so you're welcome. So what I think do you we mean actually when got... you say because I'm a complete outsider mm -hmm. here. What do you mean when you say Deke dub? Deke is the production company that dubbed Sailor Moon into English. It has since had a redub into English, which is the Viz Media dub. Viz Media currently owns Sailor Moon. The Deke dub was the original dub, and like Luna the cat has um, an English accent, and like she doesn't in the Viz Media dub, but the Deke dub was the first, and for a lot of people, like the definitive Sailor Moon dub, and uh, you got that because of Canada, so you're welcome. Cool. 
cool. So how did you meet Digimon? So I first met Digimon um, because the English dub came out as soon as the Japanese dub did. Uh, when it was on the air, I watched the first season in 1999 when it first came out, and I thought it was great, and I kept watching it uh, till I was an adult. <laughs> I rewatched it four years ago. So there you go. All right. That's my meet cute. Let's move into the History 101 <laughs> where Ashley is going to tell us about a lot of stuff that's not going to make sense to Jason. Okay, so you're going to get super lost. I'm so excited. I'm going to start a little bit with the production history because it's kind of a weird backward thing. It's actually very American because Digimon was a toy that they shoved into a media franchise. Was it really? It was. So Isn't it a card game too? Am I wrong about that? It is, but it didn't start as a card game. Okay, you're okay. probably actually thinking of Yu-Gi-Oh, which is the really popular anime oh, that has yeah. The card yes, game, yes, yes. Um, but like Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh, Digimon is not a card game. It or, is. Or it, it has there later. There was a card, card game. No, but Yu-Gi-Oh like and Pokemon. Pokemon did. Yes. Um, so Digimon debuted in 1997 as a competitor to Tamagotchis. Now, if you're a really young person and you don't know what a Tamagotchi is, it's a crappy little plastic toy that's batteries would die after two hours, so the pet that lived in your crappy little toy would die at the end of the day. I remember those. I was also quite old enough to be like, these are stupid. My Tamagotchi <laughs> was named R2-D2. Uh, oh, cool. What was your animal? Yeah, it was a cat. Oh, cool. Of course it was a cat. Could you choose what animal it was inside or was it random? Um, I I don't know. Mine was only a cat, All right, which cool. was great for me. Um, so Digimon was a competitor to Tamagotchi and other popular digital pets. Um, it was first released as an anime two years later in 1999. Now, I'm sure this leads everyone to the question, which came first, Digimon or Pokemon? Hey, Ashley. Yeah. Yes. Which came first, <laughs> Digimon or Pokemon? So the first Digimon product was the Digimon Virtual Pet, the little Tamagotchi. And uh, like I mentioned, it made its debut in Japan in 1997 on June 26. The first Pokemon product to be released was Pokemon Red and Green for the Game Boy. And that was released on February 27, 1996, so about 16 months before Digimon. So Pokemon technically came first. I want to be the very best. I just like no one ever was. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you know the rest of the theme song? I know a good portion of it. Um, <laughs> it's, a good, I, it's a good song. I, it's not a good yes, song. Yes, it is. I watched Pokemon and um, I think it's super lame. Look, I come <laughs> from the generation of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, yeah, the you're... originals, and Batman the Animated Series. Yes. Um... So when they originally aired. Yeah. So I'm I'm pre Pokemon. I'm pre Digimon. Digimon's so good. I'm pre all of them. It's so good. Yeah. Uh, so for the sake of the lesson, I am going to focus on the television shows and maybe the movie, but we're not going to talk a lot about the virtual pet game, the toys, the card game, the video games, just because too they much. don't they don't push the narrative forward at all. Okay. It's just like a weird dumb toy that you could get. Got it. Um, so before we jump into the narrative, I'm going to explain a little bit about what Digimon themselves are and how they work, because I know Jason has no idea. Okay, and can I make a guess? Sure. They're digital animals. Am I right? Uh, you're sort of right. Are they robot animals? In the no, cartoon? they're not robots. Okay. Uh, they look like robots sometimes because that mech design is very popular in anime. All right. Um, but no, they are organic beings. Digimon mostly look like animals or creatures that you're familiar with in the real world. For example, Gachomon, who is my favorite Digimon, who I have a toy of that I know Jason has seen, is like looks like a little white cat with purple markings and big yellow gloves. So no matter what type of real world animal they resemble, all Digimon hatch from Dejitama or Digi eggs. So they all hatch out of eggs. And they grow up via Digivolution or Digivolving, which is similar to the way Pokemon evolve. It changes their appearance and it ups their powers. However, unlike Pokemon, it's not permanent. So a Digimon can de-Digivolve when they're finished with their fight or if they sustain too much damage and revert to their previous cuter selves, which makes them a thousand times better than Pokemon to begin with. Why? Because Charmander is like a super cute little fire dragon thing, right? And then to make it powerful and to win, because Digimon is actually about working with your familiar that you share a soul with in order to save the world. It's not about cockfighting the way that Pokemon is. Like in Pokemon, you take your animal, you treat it like a slave, and you do it for money and for fame, which is horrible. And then plus, once cute little Charmander evolves into ugly but more powerful Charmeleon, it can never return into cute Charmander again. But Digimon can. All right. I have a stupid question. Mm hmm. What is the digital part of this? Because you, oh, you keep well, call- they live in the digital world. Okay, because you kept saying digi eggs and digi this. It, and, well, and, that's and no- also and just no- branding. And, no- and nothing was digital. Well, we'll get to it. So, particularly during the first few seasons of the show, for Digimon to digivolve into their highest capable levels, which are Ultimate and Mega, their digi destined must collect special items like crests to facilitate them transforming to that level. They can't like just do it. You oh, kind of have to crests? like crests. 
C R E S T. Now are these actual like crests that you could wear? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like okay, little okay. pins, I guess. Um, Digimon are also way smarter than Pokemon because they're capable of human levels of intelligence and speech. Are they sentient? Yes. Wow. That's like you're bonded psychically. Your souls are bonded to your Digimon. Oh, so they're sort of like a, a daemon. Yes. Uh, they're from very the much. Compass. Yeah. They're like a daemon or from mythology. Yeah. Um, and yes, Digimon can die. And when that happens, they break down into little 8 bit pixels and they're scattered into the wind. But under certain circumstances, they can be reassembled and come back to life. Mm-hmm. Um, if they are able to be resurrected, the pixels come back together and form a new Digi egg, and the whole process starts again, but with memory loss. Mm-hmm. So if a Digi destined, if the human component dies, then the Digimon permanently dies as well because they're inextricably tied together. Now it's time to talk about the first ever television series that I so dearly love. Digi- Digimon Adventure debuted on March 6th, 1999 with 20 minute episodes. And as the popularity of the uh, toy pets uh, grew, an animated short was produced and used to pitch and develop this television series. So it's set very specifically. It begins on August 1st, 1999. And there are seven kids and they're away at summer camp and they become friends. They want to be the very best. <laughs> no, they don't because oh. it's not a competition because this isn't slavery. They kind of care about each other. That's right. There you go. <laughs> about their Digimon. Well, they don't have Digimon yet. Dun, 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 dun. So they're at summer camp, right? What's a weird thing to happen in the summer? Snow. So it starts to snow, and these little Tamagotchi things fall out of the sky, and they grab them, and they're instantly transported through a little pixely panel into the digital world for the first time. Wait, 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 what? what a rainstorm transports it snows. them. It's snow. A snowstorm teleports them into a digital world? Well, their digivices transport them into the digital world. Which are the little Tamagotchi things that they carry around. But the, these devices come from the sky. Yes. Is this an alien invasion? <laughs> are, al- are aliens a part of this there show? There are often giant monsters fighting in the streets of Tokyo, so I maybe. Think, I think this is a subliminal alien invasion. Okay, so I'm going to go through with the main characters and their Digimon. I know you're not going to remember any of this, nope. but it's important. So, um, <laughs> <What>? <laughs> so Taichi Kamiya, uh, Tai as he's called in English, is the leader of the group, and his Digimon is Agumon. He kind of looks like an orange T-Rex. Sora Takanuchi is the brave tomboy who's best friends with Taichi and later becomes a love interest. Her Digimon is Biomon, who looks like a pink bird. Yamato Ishida, who's called Matt in English, is the second in command, and he's kind of like mysterious and moody. And his Digimon is Gabumon, who looks like a white seal dog with a yellow horn on its head. Koshiro Izumi, Izzy in English, is the super smart hacker guy who carries around a laptop that's like bigger than his entire torso. His Digimon is Tentamon, who looks like a red beetle, and he has a crush on Mimi. Mimi Tachikawa is the pretty girl airhead. Her Digimon is Palmon, who is literally a, a green flower with a pink bloom on the top of her head. Joe Kido is the oldest of the group, and he's the nerd with glasses. His Digimon is Gomamon, who looks like a cuter or smaller white seal. Takeru Takashi, TK in English, because this is the 90s, guys, um, is the youngest member of the team. He's kind of the heart of the team, and he's Yamato's younger brother. Now, they have different last names because Yamato lives with his father, so he has his last name, and Takeru lives with his mother and has her last name. So his Digimon is Patamon, who looks like an orange Tsum Tsum with wings. The Digi Destined are attacked almost immediately after that's falling. That's what these kids are called, the Digi Destined? Yes. Okay. Uh, that's what they're called in the English dubs. So can that's I, what that's can what I ask a, another uh, crazy question? Sure. Um, are these kids like the first people in their world to discover these creatures? Yes, and we'll talk a little bit more about okay, that. Okay, so, so they're, they are sort of like special chosen ones. Yes, but they're not in their world. They're in the digital world right now. They fell into the digital world. Do they ever get to come back? To yes, their lots. Real world? Yes. Lots. Are they stuck in the digital they're world stuck like Oz? Here. They're stuck here. Well, hey, is it like Oz? You're getting. You're jumping way too far ahead. I'm so confused. Um, <laughs> you're jumping so far ahead. Um, the Digidestin, they're attacked almost immediately, and they pretty quickly learn how to fight along with their Digimon, just like I explained earlier before Jason started asking questions. <laughs> it's then revealed. I'm so digi lost. <laughs> that they were brought to the digital world to fight a Digimon named Devimon. Like, Devimon. Like Devimon. 
Devilmon. Like Devo. Get it? Like, like in the De- 80s. Exactly. Yeah. Um, who wants to take over the digital world's file island. I'm not kidding. <laughs> But only the island, not like the whole world, just the island. Of course, after fighting a number of minor bosses along the way, they defeat Devimon, only to learn that he was the first of so many more big bosses that they have to defend the digital world So from. it's very much like a video game. It is a lot like a video game. Okay. This is a very typical like anime quest. Like Pokemon is structured the same way, um, just with more slavery. After this, they travel to the server continent to fight a bad guy. Get it? Because like, it's digital. It's a server. They get to fight a bad guy named Edamon and collect crests from him that allow further digivolving like I mentioned before. Taichi is the first one because he's the leader guy and he is able to digivolve Agumon into a new stage of development and defeat Edamon before he's immediately sent back into the real world. But only Taichi, only the leader guy. So he like falls out of the sky with this weird orange dinosaur that he's been talking to and who was there? His little sister, Kari Kamiya. She tells him that even though he's been gone for like weeks at this point in the digital world it's basically like Narnia and he's only been missing from camp for a few minutes. Oh, okay. But he's one of the, like all seven of these digital kids have been missing. For them, they've been like, oh, it's been forever and yeah. it's been seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been oh, like interesting. maybe five minutes. So there's a time dilation. Yeah, effect. and it sort of arbitrarily changes depending on what the writers want to do. Really? Oh, yeah. We'll, oh. The, we'll get to it. So Taichi then gets called back to the digital world by Koshiro and abandons his sister. I want you to remember Kari because she's going to become important later, okay? So he like met his sister for like a second and then he goes away. Did she not come into the digital she world? She didn't because she doesn't have a, a digivice. So he just opened the window and was like, yo, and then closed it. He kind of like fell through with his dinosaur and was like, hi, and then like fell back through with his dinosaur. To be honest with you, I think I remember the orange dinosaur. I've showed you pictures of of Agumon before, yeah, for sure. So when Taichi and Agumon show up back in the digital world, it turns out that they've been gone from the digital world for weeks. And all their friends were attacked um, and defeated and tortured by Miotismon and Demi Devimon and scattered all over the digital world. So Taichi has to like walk all around the world and collect everybody again. Was this in between a season or something? Uh, no. Oh, okay. No. Is this there's, episode episode? There's like 25 episodes in the first season. Oh, it's, what you described sounds like really like a like a season finale. Uh, you don't watch enough anime. Uh. Uh, so then Yamato, Sora, and Koshiro use their crest successfully for the first time. Their Digimon get to do a whole bunch of cool new Digivolving. Um, and then working together, they get the team back together. They discover that Myotismon wants to break through to the real world to uncover and kill the eighth digi destined because there's actually eight there's not just seven <sighs> so the seven go back into the real world hooray uh they have a big fight in tokyo with a bunch of giant monsters and this allows joe and mimi to use their crest and successfully digivolve their guys for the first time during this battle it is revealed that surprise ty's sister kari who we met the episode before like that oh boy we, we didn't see that coming <laughs> did we is the eighth digi destined uh we learn this because she meets a bunch of myotismon's little minions and gatomon my favorite digimon the cool little cat uh, is there and they bond together so she gets her Digivice and her Digimon and she gets to be part of the team now. Gatoma. Because of this good timing, uh, Kari also gets a crest and gets to use it almost immediately and turns Gatomon into a really, really powerful Digimon. Um, she also gets to use it before one of the original members of the team, proving that she's more capable than like anybody else who's there. This isn't enough, though, and Myotismon digivolves into Venom Myotismon, Uh bigger, scarier version. So Taichi and Yamato have to unlock the mega forms for Agumon and Gabumon, which are called Metal Greymon and Metal Garurumon, in order to save the day. Even though they've won the day, the Digidestin learned that decades have passed in the digital world's time, and the disparity between the two Earths is threatening to destroy both realities and rip them apart. And you can tell this because portions of the sky just look like black pixels. That's kind of how you can tell that things are going on. So anytime a Digimon comes into the digital world, a bunch, like... They'll be like, when you try to turn your TV on and the, the picture would flicker and it would snow, it'll look like that. Then it'll look like black pixels that a monster will come through. So they hop back over into the digital world, only to discover that the Dark Masters have taken over. And the Dark Masters are four Digimon called Metal Seedramon, Puppetmon, Machinedramon, and Piedmon. And they were actually behind all the evil crazy stuff that they've been fighting for like 27 episodes the whole time. Are there no other humans inside this digital world? It's no, only, only digital monsters. So the only humans come from the real world. Yes. Now, okay. some of the Digimon look humanoid. Sure. Um, but the only humans... And all the Digimon talk. All of them. 
uh, English. Yeah, well, well or Japanese. Sorry, yes. yeah, 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 yeah. Depending on well, langu- whatever la- language you're watching it in, they yes. speak. A language the main characters can understand. Exactly. Yes. Uh, so they lead the fight against the Dark Masters that culminates in a giant battle at Spiral Mountain. During this time, it is also revealed why these eight children specifically were chosen to be the Dizzy Digi Destined. And it is because they witnessed a fight between the first two Digimon to ever cross over into the human world when they were but tiny, tiny children. Also, Yamato during this time doesn't like the way Tai Chi has been acting as a leader, so they break off into two factions like the halfway point of Lord of the Flies. Yamato is joined by Mimi and Joe, and Tai Chi has Kari, Takeru, Sora, and uh, Koshiro with him. The group reforms, of course, uh, for the aforementioned final battle against Piedmon. It uh, takes Takeru this long to finally be able to use his crest to seal the deal. Uh, Because he's just been like farting around this whole time being like, I'm the youngest. I don't know what's happening. Uh, This doesn't quite put an end to their troubles, of course, because they are almost immediately faced with a new enemy, Apocalypmon, who wants to destroy both worlds. (laughs) Can you sense a trend? Can he? uh, Does he have... um an assistant called Sinister Mon, uh, and they're fought by a Cable Mon. <laughs> no, that'd mm. be funny though. That's yep. very good. Um, although the Digidestined are able to defeat him, Apocalypse Mon has set up a huge attack on the human world, basically a suicide mission by all these other Digimon, and they must work together to defeat them. Having saved both. Uh, this world and the digital world, the Digidestined are sent back to Earth with the knowledge that they will never be able to see their Digimon ever again and the portal will be closed forever. Why? Because that's how you save the world. Oh, that doesn't make sense, but okay. Right, so that's the first series. That's the first series? It's the first series. In see, America, it was broken up into four seasons, but it was produced as a single series mm-hmm. in Japan. Mm-hmm. Then, one year later... On July 8th, 2000, a new series called Digimon Adventure 2 was released that starred some of the same characters, but with new, older character designs. In the Japanese dub, um, in the Japanese version, it takes place three years in the future. In the English dub, it's four years in the future. I don't know what difference that makes. Maybe it's just how the the text was shown on screen. I don't know, um, but after the original series. So the digital world is attacked by a human named the Digimon Emperor, who (laughs) enslaves Digimon using power rings and controls when and if they are able to digivolve. So it's a little more like Pokemon in that way. Three new Digidestins show up to fight him. They're lame versions of Series 1 characters, but I'm going to go through them again really quickly. It's uh, Daisuke Motomiya, who's the leader instead of Taichi, but looks almost exactly like him. He even has the same dumb goggles on top of his head. His Digimon is called Vimon and looks like a little blue dinosaur. Miyako Inuye, who is the overdramatic but good hacker character girl with giant glasses. Her Digimon is called Hawkmon and looks like a giant hawk with a belt wrapped around its forehead. And then Irogi... Irori, sorry guys, not Japanese, Hida, who's the youngest but most knowledgeable about Digimon. His D- Digimon is Armadimon, who looks like an armadillo. They're joined by Takeru and Kari, the two youngest characters, the younger brother and younger sister characters from the original series. And the series is really just not as good as the original because it's full of, like I said, watered down versions of the original team. They do get new digivices called D3s that somehow allow the Digidestined to enter the digital world using any computer screen. So that's kind of cool. They don't just have to wait to be like digitally pulled to and throw to and fro against their will. They soon learn that the Digimon Emperor is actually a young genius boy named Ken Ichigoji who um <laughs> who, who is he the brother of Ryu uh I don't know what that means the Street Fighter reference I don't know Street Fighter oh I don't know what that means but he basically runs back to hide at home whenever he thinks he might get caught up in a fight like he's there and he's like I'm the evil Digimon Emperor oh you guys want to fight peace I'm going back to Earth um he leaves behind a creation of his named Chimeramon who's a big scary Digimon that the Digim- Digidestin can only defeat by part Partnering with Ken's Digimon, Wormmon, who sacrifices himself in order to help them out and save the day. And if you want to thank us for our sacrifices that we've made for this podcast and to bring you all kinds of digi knowledge like this, you can head on over to patreon.com slash Jawin. That's J-A-W-I-I-N. 
join our legion of super friends. Check out all our cool exclusive content over there, like the Geek History Lesson Extra podcast, where today we are going to be talking about the best episodes of Digimon and maybe our favorite characters and all kinds of cool digi stuff in the digital world. So if you'd like to give us some digi support, don't forget that's patreon.com slash Jawan. Thank you so much to everyone who supports us and who hangs out and makes episode suggestions. Your support goes a long, long way, and we look forward to more of you joining us there. Now back to Digimon. So remember at the top of the episode where I told you that when Digimon die, they get all pixely and they blow away in the wind, but sometimes they can be like eggs again and get resurrected? I guess. So Wormmon, nobody's favorite Digimon, is resurrected and partners up with Ken, the evil former Digimon emperor again. And they basically decide that they're good guys now and join the Digidestin until the end of the series. Uh, Just in time to meet a human Digimon hybrid. You know you needed that. Named Aru Kenimon. There's a big arc about the Digimon and the Digestin learning how to evolve to a new level because, spoiler alert, this happens every season. There's always a new, crazier uh, Digivolution that they can undergo. So we're just going to basically gloss over it from this point out. Just mm-hmm. assume it's happening and they get weirder, crazier versions. Eventually, they get to the point where two Digimon can Digivolve together to be an even bigger. They just always get bigger and crazier. Yeah. So. The Digimon, the digital, the digital world, and the human world are rendered completely separate now by a group of villains called the Destiny Stones, and this causes the dimensional barriers to start to bleed into each other, which makes very little sense. Some stuff that starts to bleed over into the real world include monsters that go rampaging through the city, specifically on Christmas Day, because this is great. Um, and then so this generation of kids is forced to do in the second half of their story more fighting in the real world than in the digital. Digital world, and that's kind of the coolest thing that sets this series apart. And we're still in season two? Series two? Series two, two okay. yes. Now we're going to talk about the third series. Oh, good. Hi, oh, all right. Okay, it's How called... How does series two end? Uh, they, they, it ends in a big fight in the real world. It always ends in a big fight. It's Digimon. All right. Uh, the third series is called Digimon Tamer, and it launched on April 1st, 2001. This is a new series every year in Japan for their, like, they're cranking these out. Um, I love this series because it is completely different from the first two series. Um, it's different characters. There are some very brief cameos by some of the original Digimon squad, But they don't have anything to do with the overarching narrative, which is something that I really appreciate. This stands on its own. This series begins with a boy named Takato Matsuki. And in this version of the real world, Digimon is a card game, just like it is in our world. And you play with a handful of cards and a Digivice that gives you like stats and suggestions on how to play. So he's a really good Digimon card game player. So because he's such a fan... And he believes in uh, Creative Commons. He draws his own Digimon that he names Gilmon, who basically looks like a red Agumon, which is kind of lame. Um, And it accidentally, when the wind picks up at night, gets scanned into his toy Digivice and then turns into an egg and hatches in the park outside his house. He is joined by Li Jiang Ling, who met his Digimon Terriermon, who, spoiler alert, looks like a terrier dog. Um, in a digital version of the Digimon the game and Rika who's like the cool weird quiet girl who's a Digimon card playing world champion and is accompanied by her Digimon Renamon who's a bipedal yellow fox and also my second favorite Digimon. When the three first meet up, they remain in the real world running offense on rogue Digimon attacks from the digital world. So it starts pretty grounded for a Digimon series, which I really, really appreciate. The first enemies that they really have is a guy named Kalumon, who can control Digivolving, and Impmon, who is separated from his Digidestin because he had a bad experience with them and so hates all humans. They are the first Digidestin to ever encounter Hypnos. Hypnos is a shady government agency that tracks and covers up Digimon activities all over the world. Oh, like Unit for Doctor Who. Exactly. And they show up in a couple different series. So when Hypnos tries to send all the Digimon back to the digital world, their tech is hijacked by Devas, which are the Digimon sovereigns, who reverse engineer it to bring more Digimon than ever into the real world. The Devas believe 
Um, it weakens Digimon to pair with humans, and they reject all Digimon who do so. They capture Kalumon and leave with him because they want to take on his control over the Digivolving of basically all of their underlings. So Takato, Lee, and Rika go to the digital world to rescue Kalumon with a bunch of their random friends who also play the card game. And then about half of these rando kids wind up getting Digimon companions, and half of them are don't and are just sort of there to speak dialogue. They defeat all the devas except for one named Anti Lamon or Antilamon, who knows, who winds up becoming Lee's younger sister's Digimon partner. Their story culminates in a fight against the supervillain D Dash Reaper, who captures and wants to kill Takato's love interest girl, who's really kind of lame. Her name's Jerry. Tragically, in order to defeat D Reaper, they must send all of their Digimon back to the digital world and trap them there forever as well. So most Digimon series have a new cast that all have kind of the same haircut. They have new Digimon that can digivolve to a new level of power and they end with having to be separated from your cool pal forever and ever and ever. Now, there are three more Digimon series after this. They're called Digimon Frontier, Digimon Data Squad, and Digimon Fusion. Do they all only have one season? Uh, they have one series that's usually yes, broken yes, up yes. into like three to five seasons in America. Um, but they don't enjoy the same popularity in the American market. Um, and they get even further away from the original characters. So I'm just going to skip over them entirely to jump to 2015 and Digimon Adventure Try. Get it? Because it's three. So Digimon Adventure Try was originally conceived as a six-part movie series that then um, became a television series when they started speaking to American distributors. And it picks up after the events of Digimon Adventure 2 and stars the original cast, Taichi, Yamato, Sora, Koshiro, Mimi, Joe, Takeru, and Kari, but they're now high school students. So it's like... Five slash eight years after the end of the original in, series. When we first met them, I believe the I believe 12? the oldest ones are ten. Oh, really? Ten young. or twelve? Okay, yeah. Okay. So they're like fifteen here. So only four episodes have come out in English, like I mentioned. Even though all the rest of them are dubbed in Japan or subbed on in Japanese over on Crunchyroll. Um, so I'm only going to talk about the first four episodes because we're an English language podcast speaking to an English language audience, and I don't want to uh, spoil it for anybody who's waiting to go and watch them in English. So the Digi Destined, all eight of them have kind of drifted apart. They go to different schools. They have different interests. Some of them live in different countries because they have rich dads. And electrical malfunctions are increasing all over the world, but especially in Odeba, which is the city where most of the original Digidestined live. Then a Kuagamon, which is like a, it's the first Digimon that the Digidestined ever fought. It looks like a really big, ugly red beetle that's, I don't know, eight stories tall. Mm -hmm. um, it comes through a little digital rift of pixels in the sky and it rampages across the city. And Tai Chi, who's on his way to a soccer game at the time, um, even though he hasn't been able to communicate with Agumon in years, manages to call him forth from the digital world. And they have a huge fight at the Haneda Airport, which is a very public space. They've never engaged a Digimon in public battle um, like this before. Yamato, Takeru, Kari, Sora, and Koshiro also show up with their Digimon. Gomamon, who is Joe's Digimon, shows up, but Joe refuses to leave cram school, so he like doesn't show up to help. And that's he's kind of a dick through most of the series. It's just like Joe failing at everything he's supposed to be good at. They win, of course. And through their investigation, they learn that they have been spied on all this time by Yamato and Tai Chi's homeroom teacher, Mr. Yishijima, who works for Hypnos, the aforementioned government organization, and knew that they were digidestined, which is why he taught at their school. This really annoying girl who we've never seen before named Mako keeps showing up and peeking at them from behind like billboards and pillars and stuff. And of course, it's revealed that she is also a Digidestined and her partner is Maine Coon Mon, who looks like a Maine Coon cat. And uh, Maine Coon Mon has like a really weird attitude and acts very strangely. Yamato and Tai Chi get into another fight because they both want to go out with Sora, but Sora refuses to choose between them. And Yamato thinks that Tai Chi is too afraid and not brave enough to do what really needs to be done to destroy all the evil Digimon coming through to Earth. Mimi randomly comes back from being a model in America so she can help her fellow Digidestined and start high school, which I guess she hasn't been doing from abroad. So she's like two years behind going into the ninth grade. 
And Ogre Mon, which pretty much is what it sounds like, shows up and ruins a school festival that Mimi and Mako were working on. And the ensuing fight causes a news helicopter to crash, destroys part of a bridge, and puts even more people in danger than they were used to having to deal with. Joe keeps avoiding showing up to help his friends because he's failing at cram school and doesn't know how he's supposed to act as an adult. And this causes a rift between him and Gomamon. Jason, do you know what cram school is? No. I have no idea what cram school is. I realize I've said it twice and I should probably explain it. Cram school is a thing that is unique to Japan. As far as I know, it's basically while you are uh, working to do your university applications, Uh you go to cram school and it's like extra prep. Oh, okay. But it's at night and it like ruins people's lives. Kind of like SAT prep, but worse. Yes. Um, it is something that is known to be very difficult. Uh, then randomly, Ken Ichijouru, sorry guys, Ichijoji reemerges as the Digimon Emperor again. Remember him from way, way back? <sighs> and he kidnaps. Is he in high school now too? Yeah, he's like 18. Okay. Um, and he kidnaps Meikumon, the annoying but weird new Digimon. Palmon and Gomamon become infected by by a Digimon named Leomon who has this weird digital virus and it causes them to act really, really dangerous and to attack humans. Digimon don't attack humans. So they chase after the digital emperor and they cause a fight with him. Kari has to go to Joe and force him to fight at Gomamon's side. And when he finally shows up to save his partner, they do win the day and they rescue Meikumon who freaks out because she's also infected and kills Leomon and then runs away from her rescuers slash the people who have been her friends for like three episodes now. Koshiro tries to figure out what happened to Meikumon and why she's betrayed everyone. Well, all the local airlines are suffering huge electrical problems and even more Digimon than ever are coming into the real world. Takeru discovers that Padamon has also become infected and doesn't know how to help his friend who warned Takeru about his potentially violent behavior. He even goes on to bite him, which is like a big no-no. And it's a really sad moment. And as if that wasn't bad enough... All of the Digimon wind up getting infected. Kari then becomes possessed by like the human version of this and warns that the real world and the digital world will be destroyed the next time Meikumon appears. So Gatomon, her Digimon, the cool one who looks like a cat, suggests rebooting the entire digital world. That's the only way to wipe out a virus is to just like clean Control, slate alt, it. Delete. Basically. Despite the fact that this will erase all of the Digimon's memories and so they all agree to it because it's the best thing to do and they try to spend as much meaningful time with the human digidestined as possible. But because he's a freak, Koshiro never stops working, and he learns that the digital binary code had been overwritten in a different language. Meikumon pops up again and Patamon, and they start acting out of control at the Tokyo International Exhibition Center, which, you know, is only a giant public space. And all the other Digimon are now infected with the virus, and they all show up and cause a huge scene. Working with Tentomon, Koshiro is able to protect the Digimon in fields that contain their backup data and memories so that technically when the digital world is rebooted, they will remain unchanged. They'll remember everything that happened. But of course, things go awry. The Digimon are sent back through a portal into the digital world. They're not protected in their bubbles and they forget everything. One week later... Mako, the terrible new character who showed up just for the series, admits to Takeru that Mekumon, her terrible Digimon, was the originator of this virus and brought it through from the digital world, and everything that had happened is their fault because she's the worst. With this information in hand, the Digidestined go to visit the new digital world that's been freshly Control-Alt-Deleted. Their Digimon's memories were not preserved, but all of their friendships are reformed, except for Sora, who struggles to reconnect with Biomon, who refuses to trust her. Then Meikumon, who is hiding slash spying on them this whole time, reveals that she retained her memories because she's also the worst. The Digidestined are then attacked by Machine Dramon and scattered all over the digital world, just like they were in the original series, and they have to find their way back together again. Meanwhile, the Digimon Emperor's true identity is revealed. Spoiler alert, it's not Ken, the creepy human. This version of the Digimon Emperor attacks Sora, Biomon, Mako, and Meikumon, who he encounters kind of wandering around in the desert. He then reveals that his name is King Drasil, right? And that he has always planned to create new worlds where humans and Digimon remain separate forever. And that's your lesson on Digimon. 
Do you remember anything I just said? Nope. <laughs> nope. I was mostly lost the entire episode, but it sounds interesting. And you did a hell of a job teaching it. Thank so. you. I really appreciate that. Is there a recommended reading I have recommended, for, for I have a television recommended, series? I've recommended viewing. I do. All right. Let's go into recommended reading where you can find our entire list from the entire podcast. Go to geekhistorylesson.com slash recommended reading and you can find this stuff. Click on it and go get it. So one of the cool things about the fact that in Japan they created these as just series is, is they're really easy to get a lot of Digimon in one nice Blu-ray pack or in one nice digital download. Is it correct for our region? It is. It, it, it's, it's, and, and it has the okay. English, if good. you would like good, it. Good, good, uh, good. So you can get, it is called Digimon Adventure Season 1 through 4, the entire original Digimon series. You can get, I would recommend starting there if you watched this as a kid and you were kind of interested in it, you want to dip your toe back in it, if you liked all the crazy names that I said and you would like to check it out, this is the best place to start. It still holds up as an adult and if you like anime, all the tropes that you want are very securely here. There's even Magical Girls, guys. If you want, if you like this and you watched it as a kid or maybe you've seen it now and you want something slightly different, I'd recommend skipping the second series because it's lame and going right to Digimon Tamers Volume 1. That's the one with uh, the guy who created his own Digimon through his fan art. I think it's a really nice reexamination of the world without stepping too much on the toes of the original mythos. That was the most intriguing one to me of all the ones you said. Oh my God, I would love for you to watch it. That was like the best origin story. so good. Yeah, I think it's a really creative way to tell the same story but not dress it up the same way. Mm. And then Digimon Tri Reunion, which is the first mm, episode slash movie of Digimon Tri. This is the only one where you can't get the whole thing in either a digital download or a Blu-ray, uh, but you can stream them online. But if you would like to start, I recommend picking up Reunion. You don't need to know anything about Digimon before this, except like, cool, they're weird familiars that can transform. But if you know the original team, it's so much more meaningful here. The animation really got a glow up. Toei has refined their style and it's become just, I think, more beautiful than it was in 1999. <laughs> right now, it's cool to see these characters the way they have matured. But all the, all the Digimon look the same, which will warm the cockles of my little, little heart. And we're here for the discussion portion of the show. We have an absolutely amazing guest with us today. We have the self-appointed but truly Sailor Moon senpai of the internet, the host of the Love and Justice, a super serious Sailor Moon podcast that I have been on, and the uh, the host of Hyper Otaku and so many other things. She's basically the princess of the internet. Emma Fife with us. (laughs) I like that I'm the princess of the internet because I feel like a lot of people have appointed uh, Felicia Day the queen of the internet, so I am very happy to be princess to her queen. There you go. Yes. I mean, queen regent. We know yes, who's going to take region. over yes, someday. 100%. 100%. <laughs> so, Emma, in case people don't know you and your credentials, let's start out by talking about your relationship with Digimon. How did you first meet it? What do you oh, like man. about it? Okay, so what? Digimon was on what? Like Fox Kids, maybe? Man, where we I came little... from, it was from YTV, Canadian oh, television. that's right. That's right. I always <laughs> forget that you're Canadian. Um, yeah, I think it was on Fox Kids or something when I was, mm-hmm. when I was little. Um, and obviously, like at that point, point I had been watching Pokemon because that had been airing in the US before Digimon yeah, was. Two, it came out two years I think before. Yeah I think so mm-hmm. um, and then uh, and then one day my brother and I I want to say like both Monster Rancher because there was an anime of the video yes. game Monster Rancher <laughs> and also Digimon were both like also airing because they, they were sort of logical other things to air to the Pokemon watching audience. Absolutely. And uh, and yeah, so I, I, I remember first watching that and then uh, very quickly kind of liking it a little more than Pokemon. That just is from, the like, correct answer. an anime standpoint. The thing is, it's like, I love Pokemon as a video game, but I, I think I like the video games a little more than I like the anime because I found uh, Ash to be an incredibly annoying protagonist. Mm-hmm. And in this, like, uh, you know, Tai Chi is kind of annoying, but there's this whole <laughs> ensemble of other people to balance him out. Exactly. I don't know anyone where Tai Chi is their favorite no. Digidestin character. No, no, I don't think so. But we can dive right into that. So who's your favorite Digidestin? I think my favorite is Mimi, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. That's I so don't cute. I don't know when I developed this little like <laughs> soft spot in my heart for her. But obviously like her her Digimon Palamon mm-hmm. is like amazing. So freaking cute. And I think it I, I think that one of the things that I liked about Mimi's so much was it was at this phase of my sort of fiction consuming life wherein I was trying to reassess 
uh, female characters who had more feminine traits Mm -hmm. and not dismiss them as being kind of weak or whatever. Or the airhead, which is really easy to do with Mimi in particular. It's really easy to do, but she's not. Mm -mm. I feel like Try does a better job at illustrating that. They do, yeah. She's great in Try. Um, I love how she just randomly comes back from America, too, and she's like, psych, I'm going to high school now because apparently she wasn't studying in America. I I don't know. She was being just living her life. Being a model. (laughs) Yeah, that was kind of the impression I was under. I, I mean, that's very common in anime where it's like, this teenage girl is just going to go have a career in London for no reason. Yeah. The dream, right? Like exactly. Like what we exactly. all absolutely want. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, so I so I always really, I, I just, I appreciated that Mimi was this more feminine character, but she wasn't just an airhead. Like, she actually was a lot more resourceful than you would see upon first glance. I think that's really interesting because for me growing up, Sora was the character that I really identified with because, yeah. like, I was a, the tomboy girl and it was cool because the tomboy girl is usually the weirdo. Yeah. But in, especially in that original series, she's the one that Taichi and Yamato go mm-hmm. after and I was like, what? That's a possibility? Yeah. Although, for me personally, like, Gatomon was always my I favorite do love Digimon. Oh. <laughs> I think it's just because she's a cool cat. She is a cool cat. And she's got like brass knuckles. She of. does, but they're also like cool gloves. Yes. It's very, I think one of the reasons that I like the show better than Pokemon as well is I always thought the animation was just a sharper, mm-hmm. better design. It is. I mean, I think too that, that Digimon was a little more unique looking for the time, whereas Pokemon very strongly resembled all of the other sort of 90s anime that was happening at the time. Yeah, I think that's fair. Yeah. So gun to your head, who do you cosplay? Mm. And you can be a boy. Who cares? Yeah, I mean, because my inclination is Yamato. Because yeah. like, I could just like <laughs> you spike up big, my own hair and the big green, totally uh, turtleneck. Yeah. I always thing. liked him too because he was just kind of like surly. <laughs> yeah, he was like the grumpy hot guy. Yeah, and then he's one of the characters who doesn't really change at all once you get to try. No, not really. He's basically the same, but in a band now. And you're like, of course, of course you're, you're in a, band. a freaking band. Yeah. Like, and even though him and I think in English it's TK, but Takeru. Takeru, yeah. Um, Yeah, you could do the actual Japanese pronunciations, and I do like the sad, weeby versions of them. (laughs) It's like, yeah, they're siblings, but they act nothing alike, and they have each other's parents' names, and that's cool. Like, I feel the idea of divorced siblings is pretty progressive for a Mm. Japanese show of that time. Oh, yeah, But I think it's handled very strangely. It is handled a little bizarrely, and, and I feel like, too, a lot of the first series weirdly is about the relationship between the brothers. Yeah. But as you say, it's strange because they, they're very adamant about like, no, they they did not grow up together. Like they were separated. And it's like, really? Like what? <laughs> and the English dub says that they're step siblings, but they're not. In no. the Japanese dub uh, the Japanese whatever version um, they're full brothers yes. and I'm like what is the arbitrary difference is here like was it to make them stand out from Tai Chi and Kari I don't or, know who are also as siblings like I guess they get along better but there seems to be like no bond between them yeah like she just randomly shows up with the best Digimon it's and true and then becomes the most powerful character for the rest of the series yeah yeah I don't I, I cannot begin to explain the choice behind that because the thing is that it's like I, I, I think it's probably what you say it's like to differentiate them mm-hmm. between um, uh, tai Chi and Kyrie, but like, wait, you can't explain as someone who never worked on the show. No, you can't I can't. Tell me I, know, what has I know, I know, <laughs> but but maybe it was that. But like, every uh, most people have siblings. I have siblings. Like a, a lot of people do. It's it's not that weird. It's funny because when you think about Sailor Moon, which I know is one of your areas yes. of expertise, <laughs> um, they don't have totally functional sibling relationships either. No, and they don't have totally functional relationships with their parents either. I mean, the only one who does is Usagi. Yeah, that's true. Um, you know, she's the only with her one. really hot mom who looks like the same age as all of them. I know, yeah. <laughs> well, and in, in Codename Sailor V, it seems like Minako's parents are, I mean, very similar to Usagi's parents because mm-hmm. it was Codename Sailor V first and then they were like, oh, Nako Takeuchi, we want to make it, we want you to make more of this so we can make an anime out of it. And she's like, I don't know what to do. I guess we'll just have a team now. Yeah, we'll um, just have more, right? Exactly, right? Uh, right. which was her editor's <laughs> idea. But, um, uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it's very common in anime in general to have these sort of distanced 
relationships from parents and also have these very vague sibling relationships. But to have a close relationship with your familiar because right. like all the Digimon are like their soul siblings. And right. You know, like Usagi and Luna, are, Luna's basically her mom. Right, totally. Even yeah. though in Silver Millennium she's Luna's mistress? Master? Master, yeah. I don't yeah. know. I don't know. Gender's weird, guys. Yeah. Let's not think about it yeah. too hard. Yeah. So we've established that you and I are both big Digimon stands. So I want to know if somebody comes up to you and they're like, like playing Pokemon Go and they're like this is so great screw Digimon which a lot of people would say what is your argument for why Digimon is superior well I believe there actually was a, 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 I don't know if it was Superpower Beatdown or what but there was a fight between Ash and Ty which Ty won because think ultimately that's a great video because <laughs> ultimately like the thing is about Digimon is is Pokemon is more about um like relationships with your pets almost Mm -hmm. um and don't get me wrong i have two cats and i love them immensely what are their names uh light and l they're named after the characters from death note Um, uh, (laughs) you're such a nerd i I am i am (laughs) but i think that that with digimon it's just it's again it's more of an ensemble cast Mm -hmm. it's which i always love a good ensemble story uh it's not so much about like a singular hero's journey um, and also, it's less formulaic than Pokemon is. Yeah. But when you watch enough of the series, it is very formulaic. Right, right. You know, like by when you watch like Digimon Adventure 2 and then uh, Digimon Tamers, it's like every time they get a new crest so that they can Digivolve mm. to like the next, next sure, level. Sure, sure, sure. And you're like, cool, this is going to happen every series. I guess I'm on board for it. And then at the end, like the portal's going to close and we're never going to be able to see each other except right. when we can next year in the right. new series. But I think that that's the thing that's all, that's already interesting about Digimon is the fact that, you know, they are supposed to be in the digital world particularly mm-hmm. in the first series they're they're like lost trapped in the digital world essentially and and so it it is about i i like stories about people like trying to cope with a new environment and bonding with these creatures and i mean the digimon talk like that's a that's oh, a big difference that's, I, that's one of my favorite parts and they're yeah. like they're smart yeah whereas some of the pokemon are like actually really stupid mm-hmm. and some of them we eat as food which sure. is like i can't even begin to unpack right, that. Right. whereas digimon is so much more about like working with a partner as opposed to like training a pet mm-hmm. you don't really train digimon like they you you guys bond and grow together yeah absolutely cool 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 well it was so great to have you on and to have someone who would actually respond to me and talk to me about <laughs> it no shade to jay and if people love you and they want to know more of you, where can they find you all over the internet? Uh, you can find me uh, at my name on Twitter and Instagram, <laughs> Emma Fife, E-M-M-A-F-Y-F-F-E. That is all F's as in Frank, no S's as in snake. Uh, they tend to sound <laughs> the same on the phone or sometimes when you say them in a, to a microphone and transmit them into someone's ears. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, I do lots of different stuff. So, you know, I have my Sailor Moon podcast. It's called Love and Justice. Look it up. You can it's find awesome. it in the iTunes store. Um, we're doing a... Magical Girl History Lessons right now, which has been really, really fun. We've started with some really weird, like, 60s and 70s stuff, uh, which is great. Um, and then uh, I also do a bunch of stuff over at Hyper RPG. We do a series of videos called Hyper Otaku for uh, Hyper RPG's Facebook page. We might be shifting around the format of that a little bit. It's going to continue to exist in some format. We're just, you know, figuring it out. The Internet's a weird place. Totally. Uh, But then I also do a Star Wars RPG over there called Pencils and Parsecs, uh, which is at 8 o'clock p.m. on Wednesday nights. So at twitch.tv slash hyper RPG. Yeah. And then. Find me doing interviews in the Schmodown, sometimes competing, just living living that internet life. Living that manager life yeah. now. Yeah. And if you want to hear more from Emma, you can head on over to patreon.com slash Jawin, where she's going to join us for the Geek History Lesson Extra podcast. We're going to talk about some of our favorite Digimon moments and her relationship with anime in general. And now we're going to go into the teaching tweet where Ashley, in less than 140 characters, the original Twitter limit, is going to tell you her thoughts on Digimon. Digimon. Digital monsters. Digimon are the champions. Seriously, there's like three that are really cool cats. How could you not want to watch this? Hashtag, I want to be no! the best. Like no one ever was. I'm so ready dun, dun, for the dun, dun. hateful Pokemon stands to comment on this lesson. <laughs> um, yep. Yeah, our next section in the final section of this podcast is the GHL Honor Roll, where if you go over to iTunes and leave us a five-star review that helps us in the iTunes search algorithm, we're going to read your message on the podcast. What? And we'll also give you the keys to the GHL Teacher's Lounge. You can have all the pudding in the fridge you can. Warning, it's nothing but chocolate. 
All right. This one comes from PD-1138, and they say, love the podcast. I just started listening to the podcast, and I love it. I love the dynamics between the two professors. It keeps me entertained on my long drives. I didn't see in your available episodes, but I would like to officially request the tick. Keep up the good work. Thanks. Spoon. You're welcome, PD-1138. Thank you for joining the GH Honor Roll. And if you want to be like him, like I said, go over to or iTunes. Her, you don't know. Aaron, her, excuse me. Uh, you can go over there and leave a five-star review. It doesn't really matter what you say, but it just does help. It does matter how much it helps us, this it podcast. Does. Also, the, something that really helps us is going over to patreon.com slash Jawin. You help support the show. You join an exclusive club of super friends behind the hall of justice and you help make sure that this podcast keeps going uh, for years and years and years and four years. More years. For four more years. At least four more years. If you go over there, uh, there's lots of stuff. And the Geekish Lesson Extra is going to be about what again? Our favorite Digimon episodes. And mm-hmm. then maybe we'll devolve into favorite Digimon characters. There you go. See, and that is an exclusive podcast that you can only hear over there at patreon.com slash job. We have all kinds of rewards. We have movie commentaries. We have uh, an apprentice level where we'll give you notes on your podcast. We also have a private private Facebook group that you can only join over at patreon.com slash jolly. And that Facebook group, I'm just going to say, They're it's awesome. a good time. They're really good. Mm-hmm. I, I enjoy everybody we have over there, and they're a super cool group of uh, peeps and peepettes. <laughs> peepettes. So, there you go. Uh, don't forget to download this podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, and SoundCloud, iHeartRadio, plenty of places where you can listen to podcasts. You can follow me on Twitter at Jawin, J-A-W-I-I-N. Follow Ashley on Twitter at Ashley V. Robinson. And... Follow the podcast on Twitter at GHL Podcast. Um, Ashley, mm-hmm. as we are going to continue our slight discussion at the very end. I was wondering if we were going to. To, uh, uh, you know, make sure people that listen, you know. Like I said, I don't know. I wonder if people are going, you know, hashtag stick around. Mm. Uh, you know, if you're sticking around. Um, what is, what's your favorite thing about Digimon? Like, what what is the number? If you had to name, like, why you love it or why you really enjoy it, what is the biggest selling point for you or like what do you love the 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 things that i really love about it i think i talked a little bit about it in the episode i like the fact that the 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 hook of the animals changing is very interesting it's why it works for pokemon but i like the fluidity that it allows and i like that the stakes behind the partnership between the human and the digimon is world ending. To me, that's more important than I want to win a competition. I want to be the master of this gym. Like, okay, so you're an egotist. Got it. This is, you know, within the confines of the world, Digimon is a fight that actually matters. Well, devil's advocate, Mm -hmm. I will just point out that, again, I have no stakes in this argument. Yeah. Pokemon versus Digimon. But I want to point out that, like, Going to a fantasy world through digital devices is, for me, a little bit of a wall that's that for me is like I that doesn't compute like that. That's. I that. mean, I I guess I just don't find that any more difficult to believe than something like Narnia or Harry Potter. Well, sure. You know, I'm just like, okay, cool. Well, like this is the weird contrived device for why we're going here now. For me, I think it's the digital aspect of it. Oh, to me, that's just a... F- and there, there's no explanation for why technology creates this weird fantasy Oh uh, No, and they never really bother with that. About yeah. it. To me, that's very like, well, it was created in 1999. Like, what do you expect? Oh, uh, yeah, <laughs> I get that. And I, and I kind of wish I think that... But I'll that, give it to you. It's a stretch. I wish that was like part of the world. Mm-hmm. Or like, I wish you found out, or there was some later Digimon series where, um, and there might be, um, where you find out that there's like... There's not. They're in the cloud. There's not. Or there's some they're like they're in like the digibytes or, nah. or like they're you know like because then I'm I mean like, there is code there is like binary code yeah but yeah I don't know like because weirdly you know it rings my bell it's more magic than anything actually yeah digital, yeah um, and it rings my bell a little bit to be like is this secretly like a cartoon that is going to teach us how to code oh like, no it's definitely not like what is no. this uh, it is very much not that I also think just frankly I like the animation better. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that the character models are more interesting, and I think that Digimon look way cuter and more interesting than Pokemon. Cool. So, everything that I found lame about Pokemon and why I dropped off it, like Digimon does for me. So, all right, that's all you need to do. So, for uh, Geek History Lesson, thank you so much for listening. I am Jason Lost in the Cloud Inman. I am Ashley Victoria Robinson. And please take out this podcast, Ashley. I mean, close it out. Take it out. I'll close it out. (laughs) Take it out? Yep. Stick my Digimon on it? Uh, Class is now dismissed.